Now this illustration uh, deals with Article 100, and we're on page 26 of the NEC if you're tagging along with your code book. Now the purpose of this change was to locate all definitions in one location and basically reverse the scope to reflect these changes and note that the definitions will no longer in Article 100 be Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. They will be arranged in a systematic order, an alphabetical order where uh, appropriate and it can be done, but it would be a little bit easier to review because they'll be in an alphabetical order and you can look up a particular uh, definition and term that relates throughout the code in certain conditions. Now this illustration deals with branch circuit motor, motor branch circuit, and according to the article 100. On page uh, 28, if you're tagging along with your code book, and mainly the purpose of this change was to recognize a definition for branch circuit, uh, motor branch circuit, uh, so that this term could be used uh, in Article 430 mainly. Now notice in your illustration you have uh, Table 430.252C1 that deals with overcurrent protection. Then you have the disconnecting means with its appropriate sections uh, for the disconnecting uh, means of the controller and the motor and so forth. And then at the controller, you have your def, uh, sections there uh, and the, co the controller lifted where you could go to these sections and look up a little bit more information if you wanted to. And then, of course, you have the stop and start stations or the controlling means in accordance with Table 430.52B2 and uh, C uh, to that section. And then, of course, the motor itself, nameplate ratings, table current values, and things that you would use, you see that it's listed there also in 430.6A1 and A2. So if you want to look at the starting uh, method used for the motor, look at 430.7B, uh, I believe it is. So uh, that's what this definition pertains to, and uh, hopefully it will be very helpful, a uh, usable term in Article 430. Now this illustration deals with Class 4 circuits in accordance with NEC Article 100. And notice uh, the purpose of the change is to point out that these Class 4 circuits are different than your Class 1, 2, and 3 circuits that you find in 724.40 and 725.60 on pages 659 and 661. Now notice uh, a lot more information can be obtained pertaining to class 4 circuits in article 726 uh, on page 664 is where you would start. And notice that these class uh, 4 power circuits uh, mainly are used as in utilization type equipment. And of course uh, you notice that they pertain to a fault managed power type system uh, detecting and regulating when such a fault might occur. So that's mainly what your class 4 circuits uh, pertain to. And of course more information can be obtained viewing the illustration and the call out standards at the very top OSHA 70B, 70E, and UL. Uh, you know you could have a case study here just as uh, more technical as you want it to be. But this is mainly what this change was all about, was to remind the user of the NEC that a class 4 circuit is different than class 1, 2, and 3, and uh, they're used in a different manner in the electrical system. Now this illustration deals with commissioning. In accordance with NEC Article 100, defining such terms. Now, mainly they want electricians, per this definition, to use instrumentation and other means that uh, might serve the same purpose to make sure that the uh, system works properly after it's installed, whatever it may be, a receptacle, light, a piece of machinery, whatever it may be. And notice that uh, this commissioning rule is scattered throughout 
the 2023 edition of the NEC. For example, other uh, commissioning sections is 708.8A on page 648, 706.7A on page 643, 700.3A on page 625, and 701.3A on page 633. So there's a number of sections that they want the electrician to check out the system after it's been wired in and make sure that the system operates properly and it's dependable and reliable. And that's the main reason that this term has been added and defined in Article 100 on page 32 of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with counter countertops in accordance with NEC Article 100. And if you're moving along with us uh, with your code book, we're on page 35 approximately. And notice coming out the gate, uh, you should review 210.52C1 through C3 on page 87 of the NEC to see where these receptacles are required to be installed and located. And then you want to know which ones have to be GFCI protected, so you'd move over to 210.8A for dwelling units and 210.8B as in boy uh, for other locations. And then, of course, that's on uh, page 80. Now, uh, mainly, uh, this uh, new definition was added in to define, you know, a countertop which has a wall behind it. Uh, peninsula, which has no wall behind it, but connects to a countertop that does have a wall behind it. And then you'd have an island, as you see. And then, of course, you've got a number of references in here to help you along with this rule. But one of the things they point out that it's really important if you want to, you know, be real sharp uh, on these uh, countertops, uh, peninsulas, and islands is to review UL 498 and UL 493 as well as to go over to Article 406 that deals with the receptacles and review very carefully 406.5e, uh, 406.5g1, and 406.5h. Now you'll find if you do this, uh, you'll be reasonably real sharp uh, on uh, what is exactly required when these receptacles are installed on these countertops. And then for your GFCI and AFCI protection, for more details, the uh, 210.8A6, 210.52C1, and 210.12. Now this illustration deals with the equal potential plane in accordance with NEC, uh, Article 100. And if you're moving along and tagging along with us with your code book, we're on approximately page 38. Now notice in the note 1, but first before we look at our notes, uh, the purpose of the change. In the 2020 edition of the NEC, it said the steel, uh, any kind of uh, metal that was uh, accessible had to be bonded in. And of course, the code panel reconsidered this and said, well, you know, it, it's just important uh, for mash that's uh, in concrete or uh, in the ground, whatever. All of that should be bonded in. All that uh, wire mash and uh, uh, rebar and steel should be bonded in and when necessary should be bonded in to uh, uh, produce and provide a uh, grounding electrode system in accordance with Article 250, uh, uh, dot 50 of the NEC. Now, looking at your note one, and it talks about these conductive elements and that they should be connected together to minimize voltages differences. Uh, and mainly this is addressed in Article 682. And in note two says the term accessible has been removed from the 20. 23 edition and it's no longer there as it was in the 2020 edition. And then of course you're reinforcing bars or metals, uh, bonded, welded, wire mash, all that should be bonded in where it's accessible or unaccessible where, you know, naturally you have means uh, to be able to have access to it. 
So, and there's other helpful sections in here. Now, notice all everything in blue it pertains to the uh, to the change. Other information that's in black print is just by our type is just basically there for additional information for you. But that's the main purpose uh, of this change uh, is that they uh, deleted uh, accessible and said all steel mash rebar should be bonded uh, together and that's what this change addresses. Now this illustration deals with ground fault detector interrupter DC and it's abbreviated as uh, F or excuse me GFDI. Now what they wanted to do here in the purpose of change the code panel they wanted to let the user of the NEC know that a GFDI is different than a GFCI. Now we're on page 42 of the NEC if you're kind of tagging along with us but notice we can get uh, information concerning uh, this particular device uh, GFDI in 690.41 BS and boy 1 on page 611. That's one place that they use it where they are bringing that DC from a PV system or even maybe DC from a, a, a wind uh, generator, you know. So, but anywhere DC is used and you want to use this device, uh, this purpose of change and this definition is pointing out that when you see the term GFDI, that's going to be different uh, than a GFCI. So that's mainly what the purpose of change is all about and what this definition is pointing out to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with panel board, enclosed type panel board, in accordance with the Article 100 of the NEC. And the purpose of the change was to define and recognize the term of an enclosed panel board. Now, uh, notice uh, in the panel board that you see in the illustration, uh, in the call out, it is an assembly with or without buses and connections or devices, circuit breakers or fuses, control apparatus and so forth, uh, in accordance with it is defined in Article 100. And the panel board, uh, you know, is enclosed in accordance with Article 100, as you see here. Uh, it's feeding a, a controller uh, there of some sort that might be enclosed. And looking at the next call out uh, at the panel board to the left, it says it's a panel board with wiring and related components in accordance with Article 100. Now, uh, if you're dealing with circuit breakers, you go to uh, uh, 70B for maintenance and look at uh, 17.2. However, if it's fuses, you go over and look at uh, 18, I believe it is, dot two, right in that area. And you would find out. But we're mainly dealing with circuit breakers right here. Then you notice uh, we try to give you all the information you need. For OSHA, when you're interested in OSHA, that's 1910303G1, uh, Roman numeral 7. And again, if it's circuit breakers, which we're dealing with here, 70B, 17.2, 70E is Article 100 and uh, 210, and then, of course, UL 489 deals with uh, circuit breakers. But this definition is to let you know what can be considered a panel board, with or without maybe particular uh, type wiring methods and devices located in it as defined now. And Article 100.